Among the personal belongings of an Air Force pilot in a bomber squadron who was recently reported missing, believed killed, was a letter to his mother to be sent to her if he were killed. His station commander sent the letter to the young officer's mother, asking whether it might be published anonymously. He wrote that the letter was perhaps the most amazing one he had ever read. Simple and direct in its wording, but splendid and uplifting in its outlook. He felt that the letter might bring comfort to other mothers, and that everyone in our country would feel proud to read of the sentiments which support an average airman in the execution of his present arduous duties. He received the mother's permission. The letter was published in the Times, and it is presented in its present form in the hope that it may become known to the greatest possible number of this young officer's countrymen at home and abroad. Dearest mother, although I feel no premonition at all, events are moving rapidly, and I have instructed that this letter be forwarded to you, should I fail to return from one of the raids we shall be shortly called upon to undertake. You must hope on for a month. At the end of that time, you must accept the fact that I have handed my task over to the extremely capable hands of my comrades of the Royal Air Force, as so many other splendid fellows have already done. Though it will be difficult for you, you will disappoint me if you do not at least try to accept the facts dispassionately, for I shall have done my duty to the utmost of my ability. No man can do more, and no one calling himself a man could do less. I have always admired your amazing courage in face of continual setbacks, in the way you have given me as good an education and background as anyone in the country, and always kept up appearances without ever losing faith in the future. My death would not mean that your struggle has been in vain. Far from it. It means that your sacrifice is as great as mine. Those who serve England must expect nothing from her. We debase ourselves if we regard our country as merely a place in which to eat and sleep. History resounds with illustrious names who have given all, yet their sacrifice has resulted in the British Empire, where there is a measure of peace, justice, and freedom for all, and where a higher standard of civilization has evolved and is still evolving than anywhere else. Today we are faced with the greatest organized challenge to Christianity and civilization that the world has ever seen. And I count myself lucky and honored to be the right age and fully trained to throw my full weight into the scale. For this, I have to thank you. You must not grieve for me, for if you really believe in religion and all that it entails, that would be hypocrisy. I have no fear of death, only a queer relation and I know that many familiar faces await me in the mess. I would have it no other way. The universe is so vast, so ageless, that the life of one man can only be justified by the measure of his sacrifice. We are sent to this world to acquire a personality and a character to take with us that can never be taken from us. I firmly and absolutely believe that evil things are sent into the world to try us. They are sent deliberately by our Creator to test our mettle, because He knows what is good for us. I count myself fortunate in that I've seen the whole country and no men of every calling. But with the final test of war, I consider my character fully developed. Thus, at my early age, my earthly mission is already fulfilled. And I am prepared to die with just one regret, and one only, that I could not devote myself to making your declining years more happy by being with you but you will live in peace and freedom, and I shall have directly contributed to that. So here again, my life will not have been in vain. Your ever-loving son.